wouldn't have to go anywhere because this is the Talk Beat Jones and I. <laughs> This is the Talk Beat Jones, and again, I am Billy E. Jones, and want to thank you and hope that you're starting your wonderful life today. And again, I uh, want to reach out and say we love you, and I hope that you love what we do on the Talk Beat Jones. Again, I am Billy E. Jones, and again, thank you for viewing Talk Beat Jones. And uh, what can we say except have a great life Get yourself ready to enjoy yourself, your family, your friends. Let some of that negativity, let it go. <laughs> Just let it go. If you're going to have a wonderful day, you can't start your day off with negativity. So again, uh, what is the best thing to do? You're starting off with the Billy E. Jones, Talk Beat Jones. And we, we give it to you raw, uncut, <laughs> no chaser, nothing but the truth. So help me good. That's what we do on the Talk Beat Jones with Billy E. Jones. So, again, uh, you have time to call your friends and let them know that they may have said, uh, we haven't been able to watch the show. Well, you can tell them they can go to 151 Local. That's right, 151 Local. And it's actually more powerful. More folks from all over the areas can watch the programs now on 151 uh, the sound is greater, the picture quality is greater, everything is greater now on 151, and all you have to do is take your remote, go 15, and let it hit that 1, and uh, if it slides to 62, just do it again, 151, and it'll come up, and you call your friends right now, those friends who are watching this on the, uh, of course, Comcast, Cable Channel 90, Roku Box, Amazon, Apple, uh, Facebook, Twitter, all the other modalities. Call your friends who don't have those who don't have those particular modalities to watch us. Let them know quickly. Go to one five one and you can watch the Billy E. Jones Talk B. Jones Show. That's right. We're doing it. And don't forget, you can call me at three one three eight six eight. 0342. What's that number again so you can get in live? Remember that you need to get in early. You need to get in early to check in and find out what's on your mind uh, so that the world can know what you're thinking. That number for the world to know 313 868 0342. Now we have three lines and uh, with those lines, uh, if you dial the 866-313-868-0342, if you dial those numbers, it'll roll over to the other two numbers. So don't worry about, uh, well, I see the numbers are on the screen. Uh, they'll be there for a period of time, for a short period of time. So write those numbers down. But remember, if something happens and you say, well, I want to call in, it's 313 868 zero three four two that's to get in to talk on the talk be jones and why is it a jones because we want you to have that addiction everybody's always talking about on the streets i got a jones for this i got a jones for that i got a jones i got a jones well have a jones to talk on the talk be jones show and that's right i am your host billy e jones and don't forget on mondays you can watch the Hair Doctor show, and I'm a co-host with the Hair Doctor on his show. And that show comes on Mondays from 8 a.m. until 9. The Jones program, right now, Talk Be Jones, we're on the air live from 8.30 until 10. That's right, from 8.30 to 10, we're live on Sundays. And uh, everything else, I have no idea what else goes on. Uh, but you continue to watch 151 and uh, go to RJ's watch party. So in case persons say, well, I missed the show, well, you can go to RJ's watch party uh, and you can dial up and you can see what transpired on the 
Billy E. Jones Talk B. Jones Show. And in fact, uh, you can tell your friends right now to go to RJ's watch party and uh, see exactly what's happening. And for later on, if they want to share this show with other friends, other family members, uh, even folks you're trying to get a greater relationship with, sit down and watch. That's right. Sit down or ride around and let the other person drive, and you can have it on your telephone, and you can watch the Billy Jones Talk B. Jones Show. Well, family, you know, there's things going on, of course, and we want to know uh, from your perspective, what's really, what's really making your heart pump, making your tummy get tight, making your head start having a problem? That's right. Those things that you're hearing on the radio, those things that you're seeing on television, those things that you're reading in the newspapers that just make you say, I don't believe this is happening to us. I don't believe that's happening to us. And then you look in the mirror and you say, I can't believe that's happening to me. We're talking about you. Is it happening to you? Does it make you feel funny? Does it make you feel like, ah, is this worth it? Well, you doggone busky is worth it because it's your life, your family's life, your children's life, and folks that you love. You want them to have a greater, better life. So, yes, even though things may be happening and you say, ah, oh, we just don't have a chance. We have a chance when you wake up and your hands are working, your shoulders are moving, your tummy is saying, I'm hungry. Your mind is saying, oh, let me think about this. Your mouth is moving. Now, if you don't have all of that and your knees and your feet are working, well, think about it. you got other folks in life that don't have any of those things working. But guess what? They want to live. They want to have a contribution that they find that they want to make to this world. So don't give yourself no pity party. Don't give yourself a pity party about, oh, me, I can't do this. Oh, me, my shoulders is bad. Oh, me, my knee is bad. My feet are bad. Oh, ah, ah, my back is going out. And what about the folks who don't have any feelings in those areas, but they want to live? And when you visit them or they come to see you, they're trying to smile. They're trying to put a smile on your face. They're trying to make you feel great or better. We are warriors. We are survivors. We are fighters. We don't give up and give in to nothing. When folks are speaking about the mental illness, the mental issues, etc., that's going on, hey, mental issues and mental illness have been going on for how many years? As long as mankind been around, I can remember back in the 70s. When there was a financial problem and people was what? They was jumping out the windows. White folks was jumping out the windows, committing suicide because, oh, their lives were starting to end because their finances was going down. How about that? They couldn't handle it. They could not handle it. And they ended their lives and made misery, total misery, for the other family members and friends who love them. So check in, check up, and let's get busy to make this a better world for you, your family, and your friends. I'm going to start off and we can talk about, I hate to go into this, we can talk about uh, the dysfunction in the uh, Charter Commission uh, commission booth or a booth or group or folks. I mean, I say a booth because it's like, what? They're supposed to be the Charter Commission Review Committee elected officers. Is it? Is it the folks doing the will of the people? And then when you say yes, some folks are doing the will of the people, but what are the people that's backing what they're saying and where are they getting the information to form their opinions on this commission? Is it going to have any impact for 
the city of Detroit? And will the citizens be happy with the decisions that are being made? Got to keep a close eye just so you can see how the system works. And then you blink your eye and you look at the police commission. The police commission. What is that about? Is that working for the people? Or is that working for the other people? So you see, it's like a coin. There's two heads to it. I mean, there's a head and there's a tail. But sometimes that coin is weighted so that when you flip it up, it's always going to come on that particular side of the coin. So is that what's happening to the citizens? That the coin is weighted so that that flip is going to always come to the other folks. But they're people too. They have their thoughts, they have their feelings, they have their rationale in term, terms of why they're doing what they're doing. And they feel good about what they are doing just like the people who feel that they are the victims in the city of Detroit, Highland Park. And I'm saying that, family. I know we go around the world and I have folks calling from everywhere per se, but we are broadcasting from the borders of Detroit out of Highland Park and remember uh, once again if you have friends who have not been able to get us in those areas let them know all they've got to do is push in 151 go ahead call them right now and let them know 151 that's the magic digits so that you can call in and talk you're able to watch the shows, your favorite shows. I may not be your favorite show, but I'm just letting you know that you can watch the station and participate. You know, we're talking about uh, what's happening between the governor of Michigan and the Republicans. Uh, she says, well, I want to fix the damn roads. They're saying uh, there's a lot more than fixing the damn road, and we're not going along with it. We are not going along with it. And I bring this up because, you see, we can have political folks that can find something to hang their hat on. And they be the lead singer and we become the choir in echoing their phrase. The phrase was, I'm going to fix the damn roads. And everybody got behind her. She's going to fix the damn roads. The governor. But family, we have to realize that because someone has a mantra and we go for it, can it happen? Can they really make it work? Can they, can they really make it work becomes the question. And many times we're finding that 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 they stated while they were running for office was all a mirage. It's something they could hang their hat on. It sounded good to you, it sounded good to you and your friends and other folks. But is it, was it going to be attainable? I'm speaking in this fashion as we're approaching time for folks to start coming out and talk about I am your candidate I'm your best candidate I'm the person that can make things happen well is that the truth or is that just their ego speaking saying I want to run for an office to put this on my resume we have to go through the perspective one understanding if you don't vote don't talk. If you talk about organizing and you don't vote, then why are you organizing when you're coming down to the end and the folks that are looking to you to organize, the bottom line is 
you don't believe in voting. So how much is it that you're going to help people be pushed to understand the value of voting? Hard to understand if a person tells you, I've got these plans, I've got that plan, and we could do it like this, we can do it like that, and here's how we can get everybody together, but I don't vote. So I don't mean, so I, you don't have to vote, but we can organize. What are you organizing for if you don't use the power of the vote? And folks, you know, the people who are what you call the upper echelon understand they have folks in their group that vote. People, persons, family that simply get on the telephones and call the various different radio shows, television shows, and when they're truthful to themselves, they don't vote. You can't expect to make changes with only 20% of your population that's eligible to vote, that actually go out to vote. Now that you have divided Detroit into the dif different districts in which only the folks that live in those districts, votes will count, now you are putting folks into a kingdom they know that the folks who put them in office will continue to vote. They know that when folks are talking about what they're doing and not doing, it don't really matter because they've got the votes in their pockets. When you hear about the folks talking, uh, Nancy P Pelosi, what do they always say about Nancy Pelosi? She has already counted her votes when there is a situation so she knows going into the war room what the situation is. Don't you realize that your local polit political people who are elected to office, they know and they will go and make sure that they kowtow to the people that vote for them because they believe in that person. You that don't vote but you have the ability to get on the telephones and call in and make your complaints and have your, uh, your anger, your displease, displeasure with what's going on heard. Well, they say, what sells newspapers? Negativity. What sells newspapers? <sighs> Bad stuff. What's on the news? What is the headlines of the news that come on the TV, on the radio? They lead you off with all the negativity, and guess what? We are right there listening. Oh, yeah, what happened? They did this. But when there is something wonderful, something great going on, is that the process where they will publicize it and make it the headline? No. No. No, because folks are centered on negativity without realizing that's what's causing you some mental problems. Yeah, yeah, because you've got your own stress. You have your own stress, and then you are being dealt right off the top, right off the top, the other negativity that's going on in our world. But the process is not just what is the problem, the process is coming up with the solution that can make it greater, better for you, your family, and your neighbors, and friends, and even folks that you don't care for. You know, it's the carryover effect. That's what we want to have happen. We want you to understand that it's not you. 
it's not you. It's not just, quote, the big thing that uh, number 45 has put out, fake news. Fake news. No, it may not be fake news. It's just the news in terms of the viewpoint of the reporter and how they slant their views when they're writing the article or reporting the situation. We want to find some good news. We want to have some good things going on. So many good things that's happening that is not reported. And uh, I know it's a little later, but I do want to give out uh, a little happiness to that Detroit choir. Man, man, man. But you think about that. This wonderful, this greatness that happened for Detroit, happened for our children with that great uh, person that is leading them. We hear about it for just a few moments. Have you heard anything more about the Detroit Choir? Have you heard any more greatness about what it took to bring all of those youngsters together to make them work as a unit? Have you? Have you heard the good news, the good story about that choir and their director? Have you? Why did that come and why did that go so quickly? Because it's good news. It's good news. And people, let's put it together. Unless it's a, a sports team that's winning all the time, we basically are looking for that negative news. When you open that newspaper, what catches your eye? What's on the front page? It's negative news. Negative news. Then you wonder why your conversations between you and your wife or you and your husband or you and your person that you're with centers many times around negativity. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a moment and I'm going to recenter myself on the Talk Beat Jones. Billy E. Jones, remember the Talk Beat Jones, we're on the air on uh, Sundays from 8.30 until 10. Remember, 8.30 to 10 on Sundays, live. The Talk B. Jones Show is there. Well, we're going to take a moment, and uh, we're going to give us a station an opportunity to bring in some commercials, and uh, I'm going to take a little exhale, refocus myself, and everything is going to be just wonderful on the Talk B. Jones with Billy E. Jones. So get ready to have uh, some information concerning the station with this time that, yeah, we're going to go ahead and make a switch over here to come out that negative and get that good positive vibe coming. Are you ready? So let's get ready to do that uh, right about now. Okay, family? You wouldn't have to go anywhere because this is the Talk Beat Jones and I... WHPR-TV is now on Channel 90. Check out all of your favorite morning talk shows on Comcast Channel 90 every day from 7 a.m. to 12 noon and watch us anytime, day or night, on all of your favorite devices. Download the WHPR-TV Now app and take us with you wherever you go. WHPR-TV is now on Comcast Channel 90 every day from 7 a.m. till noon. WHPR-TV, a Watkins Broadcasting Company. This is the Talk Beat Jones, and I am Billy Jones. I want to invite you to 
listen, to watch, and to participate every Sunday from 9 to 10 a.m. That's right, from 9 to 10 a.m. That's the Talk Beat Jones, and I am Dr. Talk. Make sure you tune in every Sunday from 9 to 10 a.m. That's Talk Beat Jones. Remember, tell your friends. Talk Beat Jones, we're now on Sundays from 9 to 10 a.m. Bon Appetit, elegant catering. We now deliver. Pre-order your dinners today. Most wanted platter. Visit our website, bonappetitelegantcatering.com. Barbecue rib dinners. We now deliver. Shrimp dinners. We now deliver. Fried chicken dinners. We now deliver. Lamb chop dinners. We now deliver. Fish dinners. We now deliver. Surf and Turf Dinners at Bon Appetit. We now deliver. Give us a call, 313-444-5048. Alexa, open TV 33 Live. Alexa, open FM Detroit. Alexa, open FM Virgin Islands. Now you can listen to WHPR, TV 33, and WVIE on Amazon Echo. Don't miss a minute of your favorite shows. And find out how you can have your own show heard worldwide on Amazon Echo. For more information, go to firesticktvnetwork.com or call us at 313-868-6612. The Watkins Broadcasting Company. You can have your own party on TV. Party with R.J. Watkins and the TV33 family when you hold your own Facebook watch party. Connect all your friends with our friends and we can have a watch party together. Watch your favorite TV shows when you want, how you want, with your favorite people. Here's how it works. Log on to Facebook from your computer or tablet and go to the R.J. Watkins fan page at facebook.com slash tv33whpr, the one with the blue WHPR logo on the left. Like us. Click the word videos with the red tag that says live next to it. Then click the share button at the bottom of the video player and select start a watch party. Invite whoever you want. Your party will be recorded and archived for playback anytime you want. Has age finally caught up with you? Do you have high blood pressure, diabetes, or kidney disease? Well, look and feel younger today. We discovered a new product that promotes appearance and joint issues by the way of collagen, HA, and other super ingredients without injections. This product will significantly improve joint mobility, help with high blood pressure, kidney disease, and diabetes. It also help your skin as well. Call us now at 706-319-0255 or 313-885-4321. Have to go anywhere because this is the Talk Beat Jones and I. Now you can watch WHPR TV 33 on Fire Stick. Catch all of your favorites. Stay informed. Don't miss a minute of your favorite talk shows. Call, text, tweet, post. WHPR TV 33 is worldwide on Fire Stick. For more information, go to firesticktvnetwork.com or call us at 313-868-6612. WHPR TV 33, a Watkins Broadcasting Company. You're watching WHPS, Highland Park, Detroit. The views and opinions expressed on the following show are not necessarily the views and opinions of WHPS, its affiliates, management, or sponsors. anywhere because this is the Talk Beat Jones and I.
this is again the Talk B. Jones, and I am Billy Jones. And you know, Congressman Conyers used to always start off his conversation with a top of the day to you. A wonderful, wonderful, great gentleman, Congressman John Conyers. And each and every time that he uh, was at the studio here at TV 33, UPS, WHPS now, and he brought his team in. He brought supplies, that's food, drinks for everyone, staff here as well as his staff. Took calls from the community, from the folks. Even when folks was calling or talking and being disrespectful, Congressman Conyers was always a gentleman and invite the folks to meet him, to talk to him in person so that they could take care of the their situation, whatever the person was talking about. So he did not deal and stay within the negativity. He said, look, if there is this problem and it's negative, if there's a situation, let's get together and talk about it. Let's come to a solution. But every time that he came into the studio and upon his greetings, it was and is a top of the day to you. It wasn't good morning. It wasn't good evening. It wasn't good afternoon. It was a top of the day to you. That indicates that you want to reach the best that you can have in your life when you're reaching for the top. That was his key. And that's the way Congressman John Conyers operated. With deep respect, we give you a top of the day to you, my family. This is the Billy E. Jones Talk B. Jones Show. And again, uh, we're on Sundays from 8.30 to 10. Make sure you tell your friends to tune in early. And they can pick us up on the W, excuse me, on R.J. Watkins Watch Party. I have a caller. Top of the day to you. Good day. How are you doing? Well, thank you. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Ah, Saturday. That's a target day for hood research. Did you say Saturday is a target day for hood research? Yes, I did. Well, why is Saturday a target day? Because that means you got a bullseye on you. <laughs> right. <laughs> for good issues with good answers, good presenters. And refreshments, how about that? Good Just presenters, coming. good conversations, good mm -hmm. information? Mm -hmm. Now that sounds too good to be true. <laughs> That's <laughs> why you should be there to uh, witness. Uh, say what? You should, you should be there well, at what 2 I, p.m. this coming Saturday. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a mm -hmm. minute. What date is that? That is the 12th of October. The 12th of October. Mm -hmm. Where will it be located? The Debo Center the on Day Grand River at the corner of Wyoming. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, now tell me this. I've heard you call in to various different shows, including the radio. Mm -hmm. Give us a recap of some of the conversations uh, real quickly before I start taking other calls. Okay. And by the way, excuse me. By the way, family, you can reach me on the air live at three one. Th that's okay. That's okay. At mm -hmm, that's okay. At three one three. 868-0342. Once again, that number is 313-868-0342. And uh, the numbers will roll over. We have three lines. Uh, now, this is the host of the show that comes on Mondays, uh, Ms. Theo Broden. And I'll, I'll just say this for other TV show hosts. I really do not take a lot of time with other folks who have their own shows, paying their own money to be on their shows. Ms. Theo Broden is a special person as we are were aligned through Mr. J.D. Hill. So that's a different team that I bring to the station on the Talk Beat Jones. So that doesn't qualify saying, oh, well, she has a show and she's talking. No. We are a team. We're still a part of the J.D. Hill 
process. So, Ms. Right. Theo Broden, would you give us an idea of some of the subjects that you've brought up? Uh, Over the past couple of days or so? Yeah. Um, the marijuana business this coming Saturday. There will be an attorney, an attorney to answer questions about the pros and Wait, cons. Wait, you're getting you're getting too sexy to me. You lowered your voice. I can't hear oh, you. <laughs> oh, look out, world! That's right. That's right. <laughs> this coming Saturday, we're going to have an attorney at the meeting okay. to uh, share information about the pros and cons of the marijuana business. Oh, okay. We are also have invited Senator Morris Hood. And um, Attorney Isaac Robinson, we've in, invited um, Sam Riddle, um, who else? The, some of these were in attendance of the Black Caucus meeting that was held in Gary, Indiana in 1972. Let me just, say, let me just say this real quickly, uh, and then you can continue. Okay. But I, I need to put this out here. Sam the Riddle is the baddest man on radio. Let us understand that Sam Riddle is the most qualified person to speak on the radio about the various issues and situations, period. Now, whether you like him or don't like him, you may like the fact that he's going to put things out there. You may not like the fact that, yes, he has associates in association with some of the folks that he has to go in hard on. But Sam Riddle, when everything is said and done, and you're speaking or taking a word from a professional, he is the baddest man on radio. There's nobody, period that can compete with him because he has the background, he has the history, he has the knowledge, he has the passion, and yes, he's gone to jail, and he has uh, turned his life over to God to make sure that from this point on, he's on the right side of doing the great things to help, our, help this community. The baddest man on the radio. And I, and I said it because I, I, I used to think I was bad. You know, but he's a bad man. <laughs> Go ahead, Theo. I had mm -hmm. seen that. <laughs> mm -hmm. and, and he was in Gary, Indiana mm -hmm. in 1972 when Mayor Coleman Alexander Young walked out. Yes. Mm -hmm. well, 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 what we're going to do is we'll pick up a little bit later because I have State Rep. Mr. Isaac Robinson is here. We're going to do a quickie. And you hold on. We'll talk, uh, oh, talk a little bit. Don't go anywhere, okay? Okay. Okay. So, family, you stay right there because we don't want to uh, take up time because the state rep is very, very busy, and he's taking the time to come here and speak with you. So we're going to go to a quick change when we're ready. We don't have to go anywhere because this is the Talk Beat Jones and I. <laughs> here with the Talk Beat Jones and once again I am Billy E. Jones and I'm certainly certainly as we're moving forward to listening to all of the various different things that the political folks are saying folks are gearing up to get ready to run for office 45 is beating everybody down it's going to be very interesting but you know for you for you you want to know what's going on in your world so there is no one greater, better in bringing what's happening and how changes can be made than my guests today. And remember, my guests will be with me on the Talk B. Jones from 8.30 to 
10 is the time of the show, but he will be here on the first Sunday and the third Sundays of the month. It's that important for you to be informed. So without any further conversation, can I bring on State Rep. Isaac Robinson. It's an honor to be here, uh, yes, Mr. Sir. Jones, and yes, always a pleasure to be in the presence of Henry Tyler and here at the station um, that R.J. Watkins does his thing. It's such an honor. You know, uh, State Rep, you know, you're doing so many things. I hear folks talk about uh, what folks are not doing in office, but you're busy. You are busy, and so this platform is for you to help your constituents, your folks understand what State Rep Isaac Robinson is doing to try to help us have a greater life. Sir, I'm going to turn the microphone to you so you could talk to your constituents. Well, well thank you, Mr. Jones. Today, I, I do want to touch on at least three topics and, and maybe more if we have time. Um, I want to talk about a, a very, very dangerous regulations coming out of um, a licensing division in Lansing that's threatening um, mental health counselors and their ability to provide mental health services. And I also want to get into um, facial recognition technology concerns with that. I have a House Bill 4810 that would put a moratorium on its use by the police. And I also want to talk about an expungement package yes. um, that was announced that's um, moving through um, the legislature that would um, expand expungements. And, um, you know, for starters, uh, there's a crisis right now. Um, there's some regulations proposed by Lara that would decimate 10,000 licensed professional counselors and their ability to um, have suicide prevention counseling, to do trauma counseling, to do substance abuse counseling. It's, it's, the, it's some of the craziest stuff ever. And um, on a bipartisan um, effort, we have House Bill 4325 which would etch in stone the duties of these uh, mental health counselors so they continue to do their work. You know, I just watched The Joker last night, and um, that guy's crazy. And, and, and it talked about how at one point in the movie he, he, he didn't have access to his medicine. Kind of <laughs> reminds me of John Engler, you know, closing down facilities and cuts to mental health. At a time when people need mental health services more than ever, the last thing Lansing needs to do is cut off access to care. You know, this is a life or death matter. I'm, I'm having a town hall meeting uh, Monday, tomorrow, October 7th at 6 p.m. at 51 West Hancock. And I'm calling on um, all the block club leaders, all concerned citizens, people that have a family member with mental health issues. You need to come on out and get information. Um, this Tuesday, the House Ways and Means Committee in the legislature will be voting on House Bill 4325. And um, we need to get behind these licensed professional counselors. These are folks with master's degree level training. Um, they're, they, they are the ones who, when people need help or, or need somebody to talk to, um, they're there. And um, right now there's some agenda coming from Lara. And um, What's Lara? Lara is, is, the, is, the, is, the, uh, is the executive office division that licenses people to be cosmetologists, electricians, anybody that has to get a license from the state of Michigan. It's this agency that regulates them. And there's some agenda. It might be coming from the insurance industry because if you take away these folks, Call back the old. If, mm -hmm. if, if, you, if, you, if you chop these people's ability to do their job, they no longer have to be reimbursed for their services. So as you probably some profit agenda somebody's pushing um, but we're taking it out of this agency's hands and the legislature is going to etch in stone that these licensed professional counselors have a right to diagnose mental health and they have a right to practice their techniques without this law being passed these folks will not be allowed to practice their profession 10,000 wow and, and, and it's really encouraging to see all these licensed uh, these LPCs around the state standing up uh, pushing, push, fighting for their clients and fighting for their profession. I mean, you talk about a plant closing, 1,500 jobs, that's terrible. But you take 10,000 10, counselors who are at universities, nonprofits, have private, private counseling um, um, companies. I mean, this is going to have a terrible rippling effect on our economy, too. And so we're pushing that. I really need people to come out tomorrow and join with me 
at um, 51 West Hancock. It's on the campus of Wayne State, right in, my, in the middle of my district. Okay, for folks who really don't know the area, can you give them a little bit more of a description? So Hancock is right there between um, um, Warren and Forrest, um, and it'll be located right between Woodward and Cass. Uh, right there next to where the sheriff has his office. And we're going to be on the second floor, 51 West Hancock, right on the campus of, of Wayne State in the old Cass Corridor area. Will it be, uh, is it accessible to folks who have disabilities? Yes, and, and the, the event is co-hosted by ARC Detroit, which is the leading advocacy group for persons with developmental disabilities. Wow. They have a great elevator, and it's totally accessible. And, um, and, and we really are focusing on the disability community at this particular particular rally because community mental health counseling is going to be limited if we don't get this bill passed it's going to be um it's going to be deadly it's, uh, you know to just think about people that will your you, counselors aren't supposed to abandon their clients right 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 but if you get rid of 10,000 counselors what I mean, what happens to all these counselors I mean, to all these people who who are getting these services it's terrible just to think about it you know stay rep when you're saying that Folks who, are, who have been in business, been doing the service, been doing the service of uh, dealing with folks with mental Ill, Ill issues, now they're going to say that their practice, they have to stop their practice unless what? Yeah, and they've been operating under the current rules for 30 years, and Laura is now tinkering with the rules to say that they're, they're not qualified to do this. Now, they're not psychiatrists. They're not prescribing medicine. They're just doing what they're trained to do. Mm -hmm, and, you, mm -hmm. you know, I, I'm over here at Wayne State University. These folks are, are doing rigorous, rigorous training. I mean, this is a master's degree in counseling. These are professionals. This isn't like, you know, you get out of a Cracker Jack box. These are some highly trained folks. And there has been no incidents in the 30 years where people are saying they're doing a poor job. So there's no, there's no where is this coming from? Just like that car insurance bill. The car insurance people wanted to cut off access to care for survivors so they can make more money. Right, this right. is a terrible trend that, that people are pushing that undermines access to care. We are already under, we are already overloaded where we can't provide the services to people with mental health issues already. So and, this group wants to be the power group that everyone has to kind of bow down to and be licensed under their direction, under their prescription. Is that what it is? Well. Well, uh, the, these professional counselors have always been licensed under LARA, uh, cosmetologists, barbers. You get your license, and there's regulations that say, hey, you've got to take this many classes. You've got to uh, you know, meet these standards. And so right now, they're saying that these counselors can no longer do their jobs. They're stripping from them the right to do, to do mental health diagnosis, the right to even use their own counseling techniques. And so, you know, maybe this work, I, I don't, you know, maybe we'll go to psychologists or social workers, but right now about 30 percent of the mental health services are provided by these counselors. Right, right, right. And and, and, and we want to just keep the status quo. And once we get through with this, we need to do an examination to expand mental health services. You know, Very uh, much so, less sir. prisons, more help for people, more education, and and. and you know, and, and I really, you know, we got to think about, you know, as the governor. What is your thoughts in terms of trying to do something about those situations, scenarios, sir? Mr. Isaac, State Rep. Mr. Isaac Robinson. Well, the first thing that I'm, I've done with this issue is I established a legislative task force so that I can learn from the licensed professional counselors what impacts their professions. I've done the same thing with cosmetologists and barbers. So the first thing I'm doing is to know that if I'm going to be tinkering with people's profession or, or, or proposing legislation, I'm going to talk to the people involved in it. Yes. And so um, obviously we always got to push for more funding, but then once we have the money, how do we do it? You know, we don't want to go back to warehouses, warehousing people with, with, with disabilities and mental illness. We want to make sure people have a quality of life, yes. independent living. Very much. And, and, and so those are conversations that we can have, and I'll follow the lead of my community on it. Well, uh, you're putting it out there. Yes, sir. You know, and that's the whole process about having State Rep Isaac Robinson come to this program, family, is so that you can hear. You know, you get all of these folks who are... Uh, people who make calls and saying what is not happening, what is the problems, etc. Let me stop and let you speak on that that you just hold it held up, sir.
Yep, and I have another one over here that says we support licensed counselors, LPCs. And, and on the internet, they always, you know the old song, you down with OPP? Yes. So they actually saw this thing where they say, you down with LPCs? Yeah, you know me. <laughs> but they're the greatest people in the world. They're on, they're on fire. You know, they have a Facebook group with about 5,000 people. Um, Can I read this? Yes. The sign that I have says, we support licensed professional counselors support house bill 4325 and this is courtesy of rep state rep isaac robinson so you've got folks who are licensed and they're saying that despite the fact that you are licensed we no longer feel that your services are yep and they're professionals these are master's degree level counselors who are now they're going to say that they no longer can it's beyond their scope of their authority to to actually do their job and so what house bill 4325 does it etches in stone that counselors will continue to be able to do the vital work they do they can diagnose mental health they can they can use psychotherapy uh, counseling techniques they can continue to do their job and the impact on this is if you just if each of these 10,000 um, 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 LC, LPCs have just 15 clients, that's 150,000 clients. But we know that they're interacting with more than 100 a year, probably hundreds. So you're, you, this is an impact on millions of people. Yes, yes. Now, and then when you talk about um, a million clients, and then they each have five family members, because you know when you have someone in your family that has an issue, it impacts you. That's right, that's right. And then if you take 10,000 jobs away, Come on. now you've destroyed the livelihood of, of 10,000 families and so this impacts all of us this impacts all of us and um, and so we need to get on the phones and, and talk to my colleagues in the house and the Senate and let's get this bill moved fast and then goes the next step of getting Governor Whitmer to sign it and so that'll be the next step let me do a question for you sir state rep Isaac Robinson as a citizen and you say, get on the phone and call the other folks, your colleagues. If I picked up my phone and I called and I'm actually able to speak to someone in that office, what would my conversation, well, what should my conversation uh, sound like to that person? Um, I, I would urge um, these elected officials to support House Bill 4325. We are against cuts to mental health services, and we support the L LPCs, the licensed professional counselors. And 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 the, you know, even if you have a bum politician, a bum politician can count, <laughs> right? At least a ten. If you get if you get ten phone calls in the day of the vote, hey, they're blowing my phone up, and if no one's talking to them, That's they right. might even vote with the people. That's right. That's right. That's <laughs> right. It, 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 you know, and they might run for re-election, and they might say. Maybe I should do the right thing, mm. as opposed to the whoever's corporate special interest is behind this. So and they're laying low. Mm -hmm. The people, the people that are that were kind of negotiating these changes within Laura, yes. they did it in the dark of night, manipulating uh, bureaucrats, and so they're not really showing their face. And we put the flashlight on them now, because <laughs> I don't, I don't even know who's who's. Who's against? Who are the, I don't. I haven't seen anybody against House Bill forty three twenty five. Let me let me read this one. Yeah. Your other sign says, no cuts, no cuts to mental health services pass House Bill 4325. I mean, so you actually out here fighting hard for this bill that you're speaking on. And we as a people, you're saying that we can assist you, State Rep. Isaac Robinson, in helping to pass this bill? Yep, and especially, um, we got to blow the governor's um, phones up. I have full confidence on an issue like this, that she will do the right thing and sign this bill once we put it on our desk. But in politics, and, and until it's over, again, until the ninth inning or the fat lady sings or whatever <laughs> it is, you've got to keep pushing because there's other, maybe there's moneyed interest or somebody that comes up with some good argument. Um, but, but I don't know of a good argument on why you could cut 10,000 LPCs who are helping our most vulnerable, people who need mental health services and... Um, you know, I'm confident we're going to get it done, but we need the support of the community to speak up and speak out. When you say the support of the community, State Rep. Isaac Robinson, are you speaking the fact that we need to get on the telephones and call 
uh, your colleagues or we're talking about we need some help in funding, getting some monies together to help pass this situation right, as well. On this bill, um, I want the community to do two things. One is call state senators, state reps, and the governor, and as well as the lieutenant governor who, who works closely with the governor, uh, Garland Gilchrist. The second thing is um, as we approach this vote on Tuesday, I really need people to come out to my town hall meeting. When the media comes, I want to make sure that they know that the people of the city of Detroit are standing up for expanding mental health services, that we are a compassionate city, and that we are, we are against this attack on this important profession, these counselors. We are standing with these counselors to pass House Bill 4325, which was uh, introduced by Rep. Aaron Miller. Uh, from another area of the state, and we're working together in a bipartisan fashion. You know, this is this one's not about Republican or Democrat. This is just straight up common sense, because it's crazy. After 30 years um, of of these counselors working under these regulations, to say that they no longer can do their job, and you got students at Wayne State, Mr. Jones, who have taken out loans, who who have gone to school to be trained, to be educated. Uh, we have great professors like uh, Professor Dr. Mack, Dr. Davenport, Dr. Nicholas. You have all these facts. It's going to affect universities. It's going to affect us in so many ways. So, you know, Amy Lang on Fox News said, then why is, why is the state of Michigan doing this? Yes. And, you know, the governor hasn't put out a statement yet on, on why this agency is doing this. Um, and, and, I, and all I can do is fight and push uh, but, to fix the problem. But stay rep, and I'm going to go to telephones very shortly, families that's waiting. Then in this time, in this time in which we're having all of these issues or all these situations coming out and everyone is attesting it, that it is a, this person has this mental illness problem and that's why they did these, they committed these crimes or murders or et cetera. Why at this time with 45 in the office making everybody else lose their mind, would they want to tamper with the uh, uh, the safety net of these counselors, I have. I, but there's two two theories. Um, one is there's a turf war between other you know psychologists or other areas of people who may want to do this work instead of the counselors. So it's, you know, um, but but these other other professionals like psychologists, social workers. We don't see them speaking out uh, for or against. Mm -hmm. I do have some people who are social workers who are, who are standing with the LPCs. There are a lot of people in the mental health. So there's maybe some turf war games, but I don't think that's what's driving this. I think that there's some insurance companies mm. who, who may have had some contacts in Lara who said maybe if we move these rules around, we don't have to reimburse these 10,000 counselors for their services anymore, and we can make a little more profit. Now, I don't know that for sure, but that usually when something doesn't make sense and, and, and you have a government agency just totally f doing so, I, this crazy flipping of the rules, there has to be somebody with an agenda. And so I don't know for sure, but usually you follow the money, and it'll explain the unexplained in politics. <laughs> I like the way you put that. Uh, Ms. Theo? Yes. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Have you been able to follow the conversation? Oh, yes, I have. Any comments or conversation to the uh, state uh, rep, yes. Isaac Robinson? The first thing that I think about is when John England was the governor. Wait, you gotta, uh, Theo, you got to speak a little louder, darling. Oh, okay. First thing I think about is when John England was governor, and he called around and, and said he wanted all of the mental health centers shut down and just put everybody out on the street. Yes, yes. And the problem has actually gotten worse and not better. Yes. So now for some legislators to come along and, and want to gut the uh, program even more, think about the number of homeless people that are going to be on the street. Yes. And perhaps this is a plot to have more people imprisoned. Mm. Right? Oh, ho hold on, Theo. I do believe that you may have reached down and got that caveat mm -hmm. to why this may be happening. Did you say that they need more people in? They're looking at finding a way to put more people in prison? Yes, they are. And so it's not just black folks that they'd be putting in prison. They'd be putting other folks in prison because they have issues as well? Mm-hmm. 
How about that? I think that you have reached down and grabbed them by the gut to tell us what the real deal is in terms of them saying what they're doing. Continue, please. You want to have a conversation with State Rep. Isaac Robinson? Yes, I wanted to know his uh, thoughts on that. Say, Rep. Well, I, I do know that if mental health services are cut off to people who, who, who need those services, some of them may be led to crime. And mm -hmm. so that, you, you, you are so right. We can't just abandon these LPCs under their training, under their code of ethics. They can't abandon their clients. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so if we don't pass this House Bill 4325, there's going to be all types of consequences. Um, um, suicide prevention. Yes. Mm -hmm. If you cut off suicide prevention, <laughs> you know what happens then. This is, so this is about life and death. Yes, yes. Um, and Theo Broden, I just, I just love you. And mm -hmm. Hood Research, you're the leader on public policy. I need your help on this issue. I really hope you can come to the rally in town hall that I'm having um, tomorrow, Monday, October 7th at 51 West Hancock. Mm -hmm. uh, Veronica Visker, who's actually watching on Facebook, she um, has a business. She's an LPC, okay. um, and she'll be there. Um, Hank Johnson in Arc Detroit. And we're bringing the coalition together. This is just not a fight for the LPCs. Mm -hmm. This is a fight for the quality of life for our communities, um, for returning citizens, for people who are, are battling substance addiction. You know, uh, stay rep. What? Do you think, and I'm still going to let you continue, sure. and I got Mr. Rusty Jackson on hold. Uh, do you think potentially, not necessarily <clears throat> uh, an answer at this point, state rep Isaac Robinson, but do you think that possibly we can get someone that's in, that's in that group, LPCs, to come and be with you on the Talk with Jones on maybe the third week? Yeah, third Sunday? I, I can bring the LPCs are, are fighting hard. Yes. Um, I, I, we actually have uh, some of them here on Facebook. Okay. Uh, Mark Kaufman, Rita. I could bring a whole team of LPCs, and, and they are fighters. And, and, and these folks didn't go into this profession to get rich. Right, right. You know, these, these, aren't, these aren't Donald Trumpsters. You know, mm -hmm. These are people who have given their life and are highly trained, master's degree trained folks, helping the people who, who need mental well, health services. Let's meet them. Let's have them come to the show with you potentially uh, uh, the third week of uh, uh, October, and um, we can rotate them through, and so the people can see the actual folk that's being affected and what they bring to their profession and what they feel about them in terms of their uh, communications to their clients and why they so, uh, their profession is so special. And uh, rather than having me speak on their behalf, even having state reps speaking on their behalf, have them be in here with you. But I'm going to be an honorary LPC. That's what I was told. Oh, okay. And they might even give you honorary LPC status. Hey, I'll take it because, again, you know, I have my issues <laughs> that I've had to work out. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, Theo? Yes, I do. So, uh, you know, I, I would love to be able to see and talk with them on the Talk Beat Jones show uh, mm -hmm. that comes on every Sunday from 830 to 10. And bring them on. Let's talk. Mm -hmm. Because that's what you're here for, uh, State Rep. And uh, Monique, uh, Monique Mal Malcapine says, mm -hmm. we did what they told us to do. Yes. And with mm -hmm. that, I think what she's saying, this LPC, is these folks went into debt, went to school, yes. did their undergrad program yes. for four or five years. Yes. Then they went for a, through a very rigorous master's degree. Come to you the, next the field of, of counseling and psychology and all these related topics of mental health, that's not easy stuff. No. No. Right? No. And, and so these people have done what they were supposed to do. Right. We need to make sure there's more money in the system so they can be paid more. We shouldn't be limiting trauma counseling, uh, suicide prevention, community mental health. Right. That's crazy, and that's why we are fighting. Come on and We're going to fight and get this bill passed, and we're going to put it on the desk of the governor for her to sign. That's why you're my state rep, <laughs> Isaac Robinson, because you see, you're not going to bamboozle people. You're going to get out there, and you're going to kick tush. <laughs> okay. I'm trying to stop cussing. My mom keeps telling me. And, uh, you know, but Coleman Young did become mayor, <laughs> calling the people a few MFs. Well, I believe. But, but I think it's important that we're diplomatic and, and kick their butts and their Thank tushes you. without Thank getting too disrespectful. I believe that Mr. Isaac, State Rep. Isaac Robinson, have your own personality. 
You have your own particular style that you bring out. The people that know you, the people that vote for you, the people that just love you, don't want Isaac, State Rep. Isaac Robinson to change that that you are comfortable with. That's what gets you, gives you the edge when it comes to have to make a fight. You don't cut. I mean, you don't cut back. You know that you are the man. But that we're can gonna, make but the we're plan. gonna, we're gonna call out Lara for for this dangerous proposal, and we need them to slow down. And um, I'm so proud of the LPCs. They came out to Lansing um, on Friday to a hearing, and they had the hearing on a Friday. And they did that on purpose, I think, because that's when the legislature is not in session. But there was over a thousand. I think it was maybe two thousand. They couldn't even get into the hearing room, and they sent a strong message on this. And, you know, and there's a debate on whether, whether as we as we strategically move forward this fight, do we just focus on the legislature, or do we also focus on Lara? We got to keep calling out Lara. Mm. Lara, what authority do you have to create anxiety among? A million Michiganders who are connected to the LPC. Come on, talk to them. Who, what authority are you acting on? Because you got some, somebody got some money, some politician that may have influence over this agency, you got some money or some relationship. That's dirty. This is a life or death matter, and and we're we're calling you out, Laura. You need to step back, slow your roll, or you know we need to examine what what your scope of authority because we you're mm. just an agency you're not an elected body we have delegated the authority to do licensing and so if you keep overreaching we're might gonna have to uh, take back some of your authority pull that leech in yeah so and 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 and, and, and for my LPCs and people in the community you know these these wars and battles are are fought on many levels we got the legislative battle that we're moving through the house we got to get the governor to sign it but we also want to make sure that these rules are not implemented before this legislation passes so we got to keep the pressure on Laura you know for four or five years uh, brother Jones we, with the leadership of my mother state rep Robinson Warren Evans we've we've halted the expansion of a radioactive waste plant on the east side of Detroit that, that, that MDQ said five years ago it was a done deal. They said there's nothing in the law that can stop us from, from, uh, from, from expanding or allowing issuing a permit. But you know what? That permit still hasn't been issued because when the people speak up, it makes a difference. These agencies are, are, are politically influenced. So let's, let's keep the fight up against Lara and also in support of our legislature who is looking for a solution. Mr. Rusty Jackson, um, you're listening to State Rep. Isaac Robinson. You want to join us, sir? <clears throat> well, I have a quick comment. Whatever you do to the least of these, my brothers, you do it unto me. Now, those aren't my words. Those, hello? We're listening to you. Oh, those are the words straight from the good word. And... I'm, I'm listening to State Rep. Robinson, who makes so much sense. Um, it's really good to have him out there on the forefront of this issue. Uh, and my comment is there needs to be some type of PSA campaign because you got to hit people where they're paying attention. And a lot of us pay attention to the media. So can we set up? a social media public service announcement? Can we get testimonies from people who have been treated by these professionals and what kind of help it has given them? And can we get one Sunday where every preacher's sermon is dedicated to this message? That's a great suggestion. That, I mean, tomorrow That's where we're going to hit the voters. So uh, the people watching on Facebook, um, we have Rusty Jackson from uh, Oakland, California That's correct. on the line who um, just made some great suggestions about social media, getting faith leaders. And that's the purpose of my town hall to m tomorrow, Mr. Jackson, is that we, we don't just want the LPCs there. We want the LPCs, mama and daddy, the LPCs, pastor. Um, the, the head of the veterans organization, um, veterans who, need, who have mental health issues. This touches us all, from the, from, the, from the Marine Corps League to the Veterans Post, to our schools, our universities, to, to, to minimize, and, and, we, and we're changing the, 
the conversation already. And there was, there, and I want to give credit to somebody who contacted me, but they were really upset that the media kept saying it, that they have 150,000 clients um, only. And, and, and this last press conference with Verona Visker and Dr. Mack from Wayne State, Dr. Davenport, we talked about how this impacts millions. And you know what Fox 2 did? What did and some do? of the other, other, they now got it up to 200,000. <laughs> so before they were reporting 150,000 clients impact. Okay. Now we got them saying it impacts 200,000 people. So, but we know this impacts millions of Michiganders. Yes, yes, yes. On so many ways. You, if, when you close a plant of 1,500 people, they talk about the impact on tax revenues for, uh, for a community, how the GM plant would affect Hamtramck in Detroit. You take 10,000 LPCs and you put them out of work, that's going to have a, 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 just a terrible impact on our state budget and tax revenue. So you have the spiritual dangers of this, the, the attack on the mental health system, but you also just have attack on our economy. Well, uh, one of the ideas that Mr. Rusty Jackson was bringing is, is that we have State Rep. Isaac Robertson, and with this vehicle, the Billy Jones, Talk B. Jones show, we've already established the fact that we do want, with the State Rep, to come to the Talk B. Jones show under the direction of Mr. State Rep. Isaac Robertson to bring them here so that folks can hear and see them in person. So third Sunday... We're, we're inviting the LPCs, and, and, and they're on Facebook. And Mr. Jackson, and you talk about social media. These LPCs could take over a small country. <laughs> they have a Facebook group with probably over five or 6,000 people, and I, I'm actually right now live in their Facebook group. And, but these professionals are, are jumping up at Allegan County, Ypsilanti, Washtenaw County, Upper Peninsula, because mental health issues, just like poverty, is everywhere. It's not a Detroit problem. And, you know, I'm just, I'm, I'm hopefully good will come out of this. One, that these LPCs won't have anxiety anymore or other clients because th their, their job and their, and their duties and what they can do will be etched in stone in law. But now we need to go back to all, and un undo all that John Engler did to us. we got to start examining um, the lack of support for mental health. So maybe this is a blessing. You know, when people do wrong, it, it sometimes turns out all right. And it's bringing people together. You know, and a lot of these LPCs have never been involved in politics before. So they've gotten a wake-up call that their whole livelihood depends on politics. Yes. Hold on just one moment. Hold on, Rusty. Caller, you're with the Billy E. Jones Talk B. Jones, and my guest, of course, is State Rep. Isaac Robinson. Do you have a question to the conversation that Mr. State Rep. has been bringing to you at this point? No, I'm just going to say good morning, good morning to you and to State Rep. Isaac Washington. This is Mary Barber from Oakland, California. Oh, hey. Well, Mary hey. Barber, glad to see and hear from you. And, you know, I've, I've said to this young lady, I want her, we're talking about social media, I want her to be my publicist. I want her to be my promotional person. This lady is bad, bad, bad. But uh, the thing is, Mary, uh, I don't talk religion on my show per se. However, mm -hmm. uh, when I was on the Hair Doctor show, you spoke of a situation that you personally can attest to that I want the folks to hear. Your testimony mm -hmm. about God. Yes, I yes. said it. Yes, I said it about God. And yes. it's a great yes. testimonial because it touched my heart and I want the folks to hear it. But right now I've got to let uh, State Rep because he's on this issue. But I want you to call yes. me early next Sunday so we have okay. time to go over your testimony. But right now, real quickly, tell us how can we get in touch with Mary Barber to find out more about that San Francisco sauce? <laughs> you can call me at 510-613-5714. Give it to me one more time. 510-613-5714. Five Why is that sauce so good? <laughs> it's the best condiment in the continent <laughs> mm. all right we'll get that number one more time and again uh i'll be checking you out on your facebook and you oh them, them photos was just outstanding but i got to move uh give me your number okay. one more time 510-613-5714 mm -hmm. for all you food folks that like some wonderful great tasting uh condiment that's the san francisco sauce
that she's speaking about. And yes. uh, I'll have uh, a couple of bottles here with me next week so we can talk about it and show it to them, okay? Okay. All oh. right. Sounds good. Sounds good. And, and uh, again, we love yes. you and appreciate you. And uh, you go ahead and get that fitness together too, babe. Yes, sir. Uh, <laughs> I love you too. Okay. okay. You're watching this, right? All right. Yes, I am. Okay. Uh, we're going to have to get you and Rusty together so he can watch as well, okay? Okay. Okay. Of course. All right. Absolutely. You want You want to hold on? All right. Oh, you want to leave? Oh, yes, I will. Okay, yes, hold I on. Will. Okay. Miss Theo? Yes, I'm here. Back with you. Well, I'm on tomorrow morning. And wait, wait, now. You're in that, you're in that, wait, wait, Theo. You're in that sexy voice. Come on, hit me with that uh -oh. fire. <laughs> I'd like to have some of the LPCs on tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. What time is the um, rally? So the rally is 6 o'clock Monday, Theo. Um, I will um, get... Um, some LPCs to come out in the morning, if you like, at 9, to come on the show. Yes, yes, I'm on from 9 to 10.30. And the other thing is, if people will uh, log on to Hood Research on Twitter and Hood Research on Facebook, you can put that information out on there as well so that uh, we can help spread the word. Okay. All right. You great. see what I'm saying? Uh, see what I'm talking about, State Rep? Thank you, Mr. You know, Jones, for, uh, uh, you know, like I said, Theo is special. We're a team. We are a team working for the greatness, greater, greater good of our community. And when you team up with these LPCs, it's, 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 these are amazing people who, who help those in need. Um, again, these are people with, with highly trained, with, with high, they have master's degrees, they're highly trained, they're qualified, these are professionals. Um, you know, I, I've had some time to meet with some of the uh, leaders of the Wayne State Suicide Prevention Office, the professors. You know, these are experts in their right. field, and we got to stand with them because um, right. the last thing we need to do is allow cuts to mental health services in these right. troubling times of poverty, mass incarceration. Um, we need we need would expand mental health services. So um, there's a vote on Tuesday, House Bill 4325 in the Ways and Means Committee. We need to get that bill out of committee and then vote it through the House. Then we got to get it over to the Senate. Um, but right now we are in. We we need to educate the public to build our movement to make sure this bill goes through um, to stop this terrible attack by Lara, a very foolish attack right. um, that would limit. Um, trauma counseling, limit suicide prevention, limit community health counseling. That's terrible. And we're going we're gonna, to, we're gonna, we got something for Laura, too. And what okay. we'll do is we're going to put a face on the issue by bringing those folks here. Right. And uh, so remember, this is a platform, State Rep, that we respect, and we respect the fact that you are a fighter, and you're going to bring the people that need help in your fight mm -hmm. to this station, that's to right. the program of Talk Beat Jones and to Theo's Hood Research. Her program is on Mondays mm -hmm. from what time, Theo? 9 a.m. until 10.30 a.m. And, oh. and, and I'm just excited, too, mm -hmm. connecting Detroit high schools and elementary schools with these LPCs. I didn't know what LPC stood for before this, this terrible fight. So we got, we got to make lemonade. Out of lemons. Yes. We're going to etch in stone, protect these counselors. But then now, now we have a, I have a legislative task force on, on LPCs. And then that's where we start to get our young people learning about these degrees and these professions. And, you know, let's, let's turn this into a positive. That's right. Rusty, you're back. We've got about two minutes. Uh, my thought is if you have the people there with the expertise, I'd make like a 90-second video about this. And my thought is if you could find a Vietnam-era veteran, okay, because everybody still remembers Vietnam. If you can find another homeless person, then find the regular – I'm sorry, there is no regular clientele, but some other part of the clientele – and make a 90-second video that can be distributed via social media, that captures people's attention. Okay. That, that's a great idea. Um, we need to tell the story, and we, I need veterans to come out, and maybe we, yes. can, we, can, we need the homeless, advocates for the homeless. This LPC issue touches us all. It touches us they, all. And that's why I'm so proud of ARC Detroit that's co-hosting my town hall 
This is the leading advocacy group for persons with developmental disabilities. So your, your town hall again is what time, it's, what day? It's, um, tomorrow, Monday, October 7th at 6 p.m. I need about 150 people there. We want to show the world that we are standing with these LPCs and we're not going to allow any cuts to mental health that affects mental health services in, in Michigan, in Detroit, and across the state. And if you're an LPC person, remember, you need to contact State Rep. Isaac Robinson about potentially being on the Theo Broden Show tomorrow morning. That, when I say tomorrow morning, we're talking about... Uh, tomorrow, Monday, October 7th. That's correct. 9 a.m. Thank you, or sir. Or 8 a.m. Uh, his show is... Hold on. But, but these LPCs are on fire, you know, so we'll, well, there'll be no problem. Theo, is that 9 9 a.m. until 10.30 a.m. for okay. one hour and a half. Okay, thank okay, you. Okay, so we're going to be talking about LPCs tomorrow morning at 9 a.m., and I'm going to bring some of these LPCs. Yeah, you know me. <laughs> that's our <laughs> Naughty by Nature remix. That's right. That's Billy right. Jones, Isaac Robinson on the ones and twos. <laughs> what do you think, Mr. Tyler? You be kicking it, brother. You be kicking it. I got to let uh, everyone say goodbye. Theo, you got to say goodbye? A goodbye. Oh, and a happy Monday to you, too. Thank you. (laughs) Okay. I'll be watching you, okay? (laughs) Okay. Thanks, baby. All right. Uh, Mary Barbara? Yes, yes. (laughs) Got to say goodbye. Okay. Goodbye, you guys. Have a wonderful day. Give us that number for that sauce again. It's 510-613-5714. For the best sauce condiment in the world. Yes. All right. Thank you. I'll be <laughs> thank I'll be so talking much. with you. Mm-hmm. Rusty? Yes, sir. I want to thank you for uh, your contributions because you always have some good tips to uh, bring out. Uh, you want to say your last words to the community, to the world, and to State Rep. Isaac Robinson. Peace. Hey, you make it nice and easy. Smooth, brother. All right. I'll talk to you soon. Okay. And I'll be talking to you about the other situation as well. Okay. Mm-hmm. Bye now. All right, bye. Uh, stay rep. You want to take this moment or two and direct it to your constituents, please. Um, I, I also want to let you know that we are moving and trying to push and an expand expungements in Michigan. I'm working closely with uh, former House Democratic floor leader Mary Waters and Reverend Kevin Harris. So reach out to me about expungements um, if you want copies of the bills. I also have House Bill 4810 um, that would ban and put a moratorium on facial recognition technology, which has been shown to uh, misidentify faces. And really, a lot of concerns are out that, and I think we need a pause. Um, but today, I'm so focused on these LPCs and making sure that they can keep doing what they do to provide vital mental health services to so many people. And so we're, we're rallying uh, Monday, October 7th, 6 p.m. at 51 West Hancock. Please come on out. Um, if you want to show up early, we're making posters, 5 p.m. Bring a magic marker. Um, let's stand together. And, and we all got to stand for other people's issues because that's how we're going to win these fights. We're going to fix the car insurance when, we, when, the, when the car accident survivors are standing with the LPCs, you know, we all got to be there for each other. And, and an issue like mental health service affects us all. And so let's get House Bill 4325 passed ASAP. Join me at the rally, 6 p.m., October 7th. And Mr. Jones, thank you for giving me this forum. You know what? Um, R.J. Watkins, you're you're a godsend to the city of Detroit. Henry Tyler, Northeastern alum. You know, we are so blessed to have you um, sharing your great talents and staying here in Detroit. And State Rep. Isaac Robinson, we support licensed professional counselors, and we will support House Bill 4325. Family, remember that Talk B. Jones, Billy E. Jones, we're on the air on Sundays from 8.30 to 10. Tell your friends. Uh, If you need to contact me, don't forget on Monday, I will be on the show with the hair doctor from 8 to 9 a.m. on the hair doctor show. If you need to contact me, my number is 313 four one two three one 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 however if you're a first time caller to me billy e jones you need to text me so i can uh, contact you back i'd like to know who i'm talking with through a text okay family has been wonderful been great uh again we'll have state rep isaac robinson back with us the third sunday i am billy e jones we love you we respect you 
and there is nothing that you can do about it because I love you. Got to let you go. Where? Because this is the Talk Beat Jones and I.